Hi, it's time to cook with Susan Beck. I got a text today reminding me that I need to make bars for the basketball game on Friday. That happens all the time in my family with active kids involved in many organizations and for concession stands for their sporting events. So today I'm going to make my favorite bars for these types of activities when you're asked to provide something to sell. I'm going to make monster cookie bars. My monster cookie bars involve oatmeal, M&Ms, chocolate chips, and peanut butter, as well as all your typical things you'd find in most bars or cookies. Now when I make these today, I'm going to use my stand mixer with my beater attachment already in there and some softened margin, margarine. It's important that it's just softened, not melted. Different recipes will tell you to do different things and that's what affects the texture of what you're getting. So cookies are always done with softened margin. I left mine on the counter for the last 20 to 30 minutes and it's soft enough to beat in. To make sure it's really soft, I'm going to just turn this on and let my mixer whip it around a little bit. Now most of the time I'm running behind and making bars quickly, so a little time in the microwave will do the same job. The next part is also very important, is when you add your sugar in. Today I'm using a half a cup of brown sugar. That sugar needs to be beat into the margarine for at least a minute. You really want to build some air between the margarine and the sugar. And as this beats, the margarine will start to kind of break down the sugar and start to dissolve that because the crystals in the sugar eventually need to melt. Most of that will happen while it's cooking in the oven. Okay, that's looking pretty good in there. Everything's looking light and fluffy. We'll stop that and lower this down so we can more easily add our next ingredients. Next into our batter will go our wet ingredients. I'm going to crack one egg. Again, as I've mentioned in other videos, always crack your egg into a separate container. That way you can make sure you don't get any um, eggshells or anything into your batter. I'm going to mix that up. Two teaspoons of vanilla are next. So there's one and two. I'll turn that up a little higher. I really want those eggs to mix in. Looks like it could use a little stirring too. Mix up a little bit there. Okay. Now this is called the conventional method of mixing ingredients together because you put in your butter and your sugar, beat those, it's called creaming them, then you add your wet ingredients. I've got my egg and my vanilla, and now I'm putting in my peanut butter. And then the last ingredients to go in are your dry ingredients and any mix-ins like the M&Ms and the chocolate chips. This is your typical way to make almost any bakery cut. It looks like the peanut butter is well incorporated, so let's set a few things to the side that we don't need anymore. Now one of those tools is this measuring cup. It's got a clear section on the top and this part on the bottom that pops out. I'll give you a closer look at that tool where it has different measurements around it. So I was doing a half a cup of peanut butter. So I simply set this to the half cup mark, filled it with peanut butter, and then I pop it out. That way sticky things come out without having to try to scrape around in the corners of these round measuring cups. One of my students said, oh, it's a little bit like a syringe, and it is. It pops right out. I think it's a nifty little gadget that you might like to invest in as well. All right, so conventional method, we creamed our butter and sugar, we added our wet ingredients, now we're ready to add our dry ingredients. So we are going to use a teaspoon of baking soda, a quarter teaspoon of salt, a quarter teaspoon of baking powder, and three quarters cup flour. 
I'm going to turn this on just to stir because I don't want fly, the flour to fly all the way around my kitchen. It makes a big mess. And then turn it up a little bit after it's been mixed slightly. All right, our next ingredient will be our oatmeal. I need one and a half cups of oatmeal. This recipe doesn't call for a whole lot of flour. That's usually the case with flour and oatmeal combos. The oatmeal does the same job. All right, everything looks great. So let's take this off the stand mixer and again, move some things out of our way that we're finished with here. I just like to save as much of the batter as I can, so we'll use our spatula and put that back into the bowl. Now the part that really makes this good, we're going to use one cup of chocolate chips. I'm using the mini ones today. I've really kind of started to enjoy those and buy those more than regular sized ones. They're the same price. And then one cup of M&Ms. This is what makes it always a good concession stand or bake sale item, is all those good candies going in there. Peanut butter, chocolate chips, and M&Ms, and oatmeal. Okay, time to put this into a pan. I've got a 9 by 13 pan here today. A trick I recently came across was lining this pan with a piece of parchment paper doesn't have to be, you know, cut to any particular shape. When I'm ready to lift this out of the pan after baking, I just have these two sides that lift it out nicely, set it on a cutting board, and it makes for good corner pieces. You know, sometimes you break the first piece, and we can avoid that using this parchment paper. So I'm just going to kind of crease that down in there and give it a little bit of spray with some cooking spray there. Now again, it doesn't really want to stay down in there, but as soon as I start adding our cookie dough, those monster bars will take care of that. So we're just going to spread this around into all the corners. Now it always seems like there's not quite enough here to fill the pan, but there really is just a matter of getting it spread out into a thin layer. And as it cooks, all these things will melt a bit and slide into the gaps. So it will turn out just fine. My oven has been preheating at 350 degrees the entire time we were mixing up our monster cookie bars. That's true for most recipes. If you turn the oven on, and then you get everything mixed together. By the time you're ready to put your cake, your bars, your muffins, or your bars in, the oven is usually preheated. You always want to use a preheated oven that's already at the baking time. It's very important when the monster cookie bars are done to let them sit and cool before you try to cut them. Now I'm going to show you how this parchment paper works. I'm going to simply reach in and lift it out by both sides and now I have my monster cookies on a cutting board. Alright, I'll take my knife and cut through these. Now I know I said I was making these for a bake sale, but you know, you really can't sell anything to other people unless you've tasted it. Mm. Oatmeal and peanut butter, they go together so well. And who doesn't like M&M's and chocolate chips? This might become your next favorite bar, too.